In this set of lectures, we want to talk about sampling continuous time signals to get to an equivalent discrete time signal. We're going to break this down into kind of two parts. First, we're going to talk about actually sampling continuous time signals. So how do you actually take this continuous time, x of t, grab it at evenly spaced points in time, grab the values of the signal, write those down as a list, a finite list, how can you do that without losing information? That's this first part here in terms of sampling. And then the next part we want to address is given a list of numbers that you've obtained via sampling, how can you go back to the original continuous time signal? So that's what we mean by reconstructing continuous time signals. It's not entirely clear that doing this is possible. Maybe in the process of sampling, you lose information, and once you write down this new list of numbers, you've actually distorted things and lost some information. What we're going to see is, based on the sampling theorem, there's actually a way to sample a continuous time signal properly, such that even though you're writing down a finite list of numbers, you haven't lost any information in the original continuous time signal, and it is possible to actually go back perfectly from this finite list of numbers back to a continuous time signal. So it actually is possible to do that. And then we'll wrap up all this discussion with an example. Uh, we'll look at some MATLAB outputs of how you actually start with a signal, sample it, and reconstruct it. So the whole point of this section is to overview what happens when we sample a continuous time signal. And we're going to be interested in understanding what the time domain signal looks like, what does this discrete time signal look like, what is this list of numbers, and almost more importantly, what does the spectrum of a sampled signal look like. If I have a continuous time signal and I sample it, what happens in the frequency domain to that signal? So we're going to explore a lot of this in these lectures. And this is a very practical thing because most modern systems, whether it's a radar system or a communication system, they usually deal with digital signals. They have some continuous time signal, and very early in the process, what they do is they convert it to a discrete or digital signal using what's called an A to D converter, an analog to digital converter. So most modern systems get to discrete or digital signals very quickly to do all their signal processing. So understanding this first step of the process, sampling, is important to understanding how these systems work. Also, even if you're working on a system that is already dealing with discrete time signals, often it's necessary to subsample or to decimate or to lower the data rate of the signal you're working with. Maybe you sampled at 200 megahertz, but now you only want to work with a signal that's 80 kilohertz, for, for instance. Well, that is something that you um, need to be able to do, and how you subsample a discrete time signal to mix around different sampling rates or to just grab different bands of a signal. Maybe you have a very wide, many gigahertz signal and you only care about one megahertz chunk somewhere in it. How do you filter that out? How do you downsample it and work with that um, passband signal? That's another part where sampling comes into play. So these are the types of things that we want to in overview in this set of lectures and we'll start doing some rigorous math here shortly.